Photographer Walker Evans once described the vibrant downtown as a beautiful mess. This messiness is still part of the magic of a downtown, an antidote to the sterility of strip center and shopping mall landscapes. But more often than not, over the past 50 years, many downtowns have lost their energy and today are left wondering how to bring them back. There have been many reasons over many years why cities got to this point, and there's an urgent need for long-term strategies to address them. But what can be done in the meantime? While implementing large-scale solutions can be all-consuming, the immediate value of collective, smaller-scale efforts should not be underestimated. By listening to what makes downtown memorable for people and what kinds of things they want to see when they're there, we can get some good direction for tactical strategies that can be put in place quickly. I looked at the city of Ann Arbor, Michigan for some clues about what efforts might be working. With a population of 115,000 and home to the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor is generally regarded as a successful, walkable small city. Based on a year-long study of Ann Arbor's downtown, including interviews and other observations, I was surprised how quickly common themes emerged about what exactly attracts people to it. As described in his popular book, The Image of the City, Kevin Lynch found that people need to picture the downtown clearly in their mind in order to remember it and form an attachment to it. It should have visual cues that give it an understandable shape and provide ways of finding your way around. This is generally true for Ann Arbor's core Main Street district. Judging from many of the buildings, Main Street fortunately has history on its side. This map from 1880 already displays a clear concentration of taller buildings along Main Street. Looking closer, we can see how the core evolved in a typical linear fashion. And it still has many historic buildings. With their narrow parcels, continuous frontage, and architectural detail, they're the most authentic signal that you're in the center of things, somewhere that many people have wanted to be a part of for a long time. By comparing the same block to a photo taken in 1893, we can see Main Street's intricate, fine-grained foundation, a characteristic that Jane Jacobs emphasized as critical for the health of a downtown. With one exception, here at the southern end of the core, I think it's important to note that what you don't see is critical as well, namely surface parking lots. At one point in time, many well-intentioned downtowns were convinced that trading old buildings for parking areas would help their businesses. But as we now know, there's probably no greater first step to investing in a downtown than by preserving the historic fabric. So let's look at some of the recent physical changes that Ann Arbor has made to Main Street. Several years ago, there was an effort to make Main Street more pedestrian friendly. The sidewalks were widened in several places, forming what are called bulb outs. By narrowing the roadway, they not only calm traffic and make crossing streets easier, but they also allow more room on the sidewalks for restaurant seating and these planters that support larger trees lining the street. The streetlights were replaced with these more pedestrian scale lamp posts, which have become somewhat of a logo for Main Street. In the winter, they're joined by the annual holiday lights. All of these elements help define and unify the core with a consistent feel, signaling that this area is different from its surroundings and announcing that you're entering a special place. So does this work? Do Ann Arborites have a clear image of a core downtown district? To find out, I asked people throughout the downtown what they considered to be the heart of Ann Arbor. While some locations were mentioned more often than I expected, like the State Street area, Kerrytown, and the campus pedestrian area called the Diag, one district was cited the most, which suggests that Ann Arbor has been successful in accentuating a primary core. So what physical location comes to mind when I ask you to think of the heart of Ann Arbor? Main Street. Which part? between William and Huron. That downtown Main Street. Main Street, right around Liberty. Main Street. Liberty and Main. You know it's happening all around there. When I ask you to picture the heart of the city. Main Street. Which part of that? The strip from Huron to William. Part of the city. I, I think Main Street. Sort of the Main Street between William and Washington. 
while the southern edge of the Main Street core comes to a definitive end at William Street, with parking lots and a gas station, there's some ambiguity regarding the northern end of the core. Some say it's Washington. Others use the major cross street Huron Street as a reference point. The confusion seems to stem from the presence of banks in the area, but we'll revisit this later. The bottom line is, the condition of the Main Street core, more than any other district in the downtown, impacts the image of the city as a whole. For many workers or visitors in the downtown, it simply is the city. So once they're in the core, how do people decide where to go? What do they like to see? In answering the question of where the heart of Ann Arbor is, in addition to using street names, some people also describe the area according to what they visit there. I think this gives us a good start as to what's special to them about the area and what the crucial ingredients are in these blocks. I love Main Street with um, the restaurants and so forth. Sidewalk cafes and they've got tables out there. All the stores, restaurants and stuff down there. Coffee shops, that type of thing. The restaurants down, Palio, Real Seafood, that area. Little boutiques or stores, things like that. With all those cute little shops and little places to eat. Local merchants. Restaurants. Coffee shops. Coffee houses with free internet access. I also wanted to try to measure more directly why some blocks were preferred to others. So I stopped people at each intersection in the core and asked them to rate how enjoyable they thought it would be to walk down each sidewalk around us for a total of eight ratings. Then I asked them the reasons for the top rating and bottom rating. Overall, the feedback I got was even more specific than I expected, and patterns developed much faster than I thought they would. I've grouped the feedback into categories of what people liked, according to how frequently each theme was mentioned. I'll show you footage of the blocks being referred to as comments are made. First of all, listen to how consistently people began with the words lots of when describing the places they liked on the block. Well, there's lots of restaurants, bars to go to. You have a lot of shops to look at. There's a lot of visual diversity. There's lots of shops, stuff to look at. Lots of shops and restaurants. Having kind of all the shops and restaurants. I like all the little shops. They've got a lot of it. It's a very you got a lot of bohemian type shops. So I think there'd be a lot of places that I could go. While this may seem like a minor point, it turns out that people really did prefer the blocks with the highest number of establishments packed into them. Blocks with narrow stores and narrow buildings, and decidedly not the faceless bank buildings or any other overscaled structures, regardless of how many individual stores they have. It seems perfectly consistent with the conventional wisdom mentioned before. People want visual cues that there will be lots to see up ahead. In terms of more specific features, almost everyone preferred blocks with lots of windows. I enjoy walking this side of the street because um, the shops, I like looking in the windows. Just the decorations and such, like the chocolate shop down there, they, have, they usually have like different uh, cans and statuettes and stuff to look at when you're going past it. You can look in the window and look at different things. Windows to look in. The front windows are excellently dressed and they do a really good job there. So there's some things to look in windows. I think window displays are real important. I like going looking in and seeing the bands play. I feel That's... like there's some life there. I look in the windows. You can see people as you're walking up there through the windows. The length of time you're walking seem a lot shorter because you actually have things to look at. The shops on that side are, are more interesting to, uh, to look at, you know, window shop as you walk kind of thing. In addition to windows, people were very specific about the actual fronts or facades of the buildings. Lots of different kinds of architecture and different architectural details. The different types of uh, facades on the, the front of the building. Um, this makes it a little more interesting to look at. The architecture is nicer, um, nicer buildings. There's a lot of interest in the facade. I don't know, I like the signs that were kind of jutting out in the sidewalk. It seemed like you could almost participate in walking down and seeing what's going on and you're, you know, part of it as you walk down it. Outside of the building, they really, uh, they varnished and really made it really nice. And so I like going past there, you know, every day. I'm very affected by the architecture on a block. Uh, 
if I see small scale architecture that I can look at, things I can look at, it's going to be a more interesting place to be than a place like that, which is just impersonal and kind of ugly. We've already seen that lights and trees help unify the entire core, but they also work overtime by creating special places within the blocks themselves. Because there's lots of trees and the trees are bigger, so it's just kind of like the more prominent, like the trees over there were like tiny little saplings. And there's like prettier lamp lights here than over there. I really like the lights that they've put along here. It, it, it really gives it a nice feel. There's a lot of canopy that hangs over. The tree line and the um, lanterns are inviting. I see a lot of lights. I liked how bright it was. I liked that, yeah, definitely the places were still open. Especially notable was how many mentions the trees got, since this question was asked during the winter when the branches were completely bare. Also interesting was that people remarked on the lampposts both night and day. I happened to be doing interviews on the corner of Maine and Washington right before and after Cafe Felix set out tables and chairs on a warm, late winter day. Now, people rated the Felix block very high regardless, but the moment the furniture went out, everyone mentioned it as a reason for their high rating. Describe why that got one of the higher ratings. Uh, because there's places to sit. Even though it's cold right now, there are um, sidewalk cafes. Cafes, you got sticking out here. Um, but on this side, it'd be nice if they had it on the other side. While it wasn't as easy for people to describe what they specifically disliked about certain blocks, there were some interesting responses. Some comments, especially on the most unattractive blocks, were fairly obvious. This was one of the lower ones. Can you talk about what you see there that it's Maybe. just an ugly building. <laughs> you know, the federal building and the post office, there's really not much, much to look at. When I walk down that side, I'm generally just looking ahead. Based on what you see, why that got so low? Because there's a bus station and a parking garage and a, I think a bar or a restaurant I would never go to. It has the most garbage. But the feedback I got at Maine and Washington helped shed light on the reasons why this marks the end of the Main Street core for many people. It's just not easy on the eyes. You've got a bank that's all very reflective. Not any businesses that you could just walk into, so it's not interesting. There's no attractive retail except for the tea shop on top of that little gift shop. That's like the only place I would go, otherwise there's just nothing to look in the windows. They're mostly empty. You know, if I were doing my banking, but it's just nothing that I need on a, any kind of a daily basis, and the, the facades are kind of stark and uninviting. Watching how people behaved on Main Street, there seem to be other elements of the streetscape that make people feel comfortable. The tree planters, while some are maintained better than others, do have some appeal. Kids really like them. And so do pets. And even some adults use them. But they appear to serve more of a transitory purpose, to tie your shoes or finish a quick call, but not to relax. Nicely dressed people tend to use them very selectively, as a footrest or maybe a place to set down a briefcase. And I have yet to see a senior citizen use one. But overall, while they're not nearly as good as an attractive bench, they're certainly better than no seating at all. Other friendly objects along the streets included things as simple as recessed doorways, places to lean or sit like lampposts or other decorations, or these restaurant placards. They all act as social way stations of sorts, and people are magnetized toward them. They give people an excuse to pause. Do you think these people would have stopped in the middle of this busy sidewalk if it weren't for this placard? And passersby don't seem to mind at all, knowing that they would have had to go around the placard anyway. In fact, businesses that give people an excuse to linger outside, or at least show off the people inside, create a cycle of people attracting people. Which brings us to the last, and maybe the most important, priority for the downtown. After asking people what part of Ann Arbor constituted the heart for them, I also asked them to conjure up a vision in their mind's eye of what a typical scene there looks like. And regardless of what part of the city they considered to be the heart, almost every one of them immediately pictured the same thing. And when you envision that, what's going on in that picture? Uh, just lots of... Uh people moving around, lots of people crossing the street, people going somewhere, people coming from somewhere. Just a lot of hustle and bustle. 
What's going on? What do you see? Oh, there's lots of people, lots of students. I see people sitting in, first of all, the coffee shop, which is one major part of my life. Just like, you know, on weekends there's a lot of people walking around, that type of atmosphere. Sort of a, a mix. A mix of people. A lot of things happen, people walking along the street. So it's just like activity, it's people. People are walking in and out of Starbucks. People eating outside. Nightlife, so people going out to dinner. Nighttime, people walking around. Seeing people out walking around is pretty cool. There's a, it seems like there's always a ton of people on the streets here. You don't know wh where everybody's headed, but you know people have a lot of different places to, to go to. People on the street going about the bits and pieces of life. Of course, it's no secret that having people downtown is the best way to attract more people there. People watching is, by far, the number one urban pastime. But while we're working to get more people downtown, there are many ways to get more mileage out of the people we already have there. First of all, at risk of being too obvious, this means making sure that you can actually see the people. Ann Arbor's sidewalk cafes are already a major attraction in the warmer months, putting hundreds of people on the street at night and on the weekends. But there are very few other places to linger, comfortably, in the Main Street core, particularly in the colder half of the year. As we heard before, downtown strollers really appreciate being able to see people through windows. Some of the shops do a great job with this, putting their customers right on display along with their items, while other places are limited by poor placement of windows. Restaurants that feature their workers as they cook are a huge boost to a block's energy. Simply slowing people down is a highly effective way of showcasing them. For example, if you can get people to walk half the speed they normally do, you can literally double the number of people on a block. This helps achieve the downtown goal of energized crowding that historian Spiro Costa wrote about. What alerted me to this fact were the walking snackers. On the whole, people who were holding food or drinks simply walked at a more leisurely pace than those who weren't, helping to populate the sidewalk for a longer time. Here's a couple with some typical snacker behaviors. They're walking very slowly, stopping a lot to window shop and have a bite, and inevitably, making a purchase. Sometimes described as the living room of a city, the downtown needs a lot of attention to keep it welcoming. We've seen some of Ann Arbor's successes in creating a vibrant city center. By continuing to accentuate the primary urban core, making sure that the blocks have an attractive concentration of the places people want, and helping to showcase people whenever possible. The downtown should remain a special gathering place for years to come. Mm -hmm.